Hi, and welcome back to The Secret Life of Parkinson's. I'm Jessica Krauser, and I'm here with Brian Baker. Hello, Jessica. Hi, Brian. How are you? Amazing. Good. Well, Brian, I'm super excited. My family's going to be super excited because we have Marcus Woodhouse here with us. Hi, Marcus. How are you guys doing? Good. How are you? Good. And the reason my family's going to be so excited is because uh, Marcus is an avid pickleball player. He's oh. actually... I want to be a pickleballer. I well, I don't. I think you would suck at it. But, <laughs> <laughs> but Marcus um, is actually he used to be the former president of Indie Pickleball, and he travels all around the country to play pickleball tournaments. So Marcus, welcome. Oh, and aside from that, he has Parkinson's, obviously. Oh. <laughs> so Marcus, thank you so much for coming on. Um, I. You reached out to us and I was super excited um, to hear about your story and your journey. So we're going to talk about pickleball and Parkinson's and we're going to talk a little, about, a little bit about um, DBS or a, how did you say it, Brian? What's it called? Um, Siri, 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 Tom, Siri, Tom. Siri Tom DBS. So we're going to cover yeah. all those topics um, on today's show. So Marcus, we'll let you go ahead and get started. Tell us a little bit about yourself, how old you are, how long you had Parkinson's, and all about pickleball. Oh, so thanks for having me. Yeah. I love you guys' podcast. And uh, so, yeah, I've had Parkinson's since 2016. Um, actually, you know, played pickleball about a year before I got mm -hmm. Parkinson's. And so, you know, just enjoyed pickleball and that's kind of you know i'm an i played high school sports growing up and so it was just that way when you get older you need that adrenaline rush and you know activity and uh -huh. so pickleball i got introduced i'd never even heard it before and a glue salesman said hey you need to come try this out and i'm like i don't even know what it is so i went to the y one morning and uh -huh. we played and i was after the first game, I was hooked. That's and what everybody so, says. They're hooked after yeah. the first game. So, and it's just as much competitive as it is social. So mm -hmm. if, if you want the social side, you know, there's that fun group and then you go out to eat afterwards. And then there's the competitive side, which you go play tournaments every weekend and then go out to eat with them yeah. afterwards and hang out. So I look at my phone and I'm like, I didn't know, I, did I have friends before pickleball? Because they all say so-and-so pickleball. <laughs> so if you don't have a hobby or you need to fill some time, pick up pickleball, you'll like, I want to, I wish my grass was AstroTurf so I never had a mow so I could just play more pickleball. We're never going to see Brian now again. Yeah, he, needs, he needs a hobby. <laughs> I do need a hobby. <laughs> Um, and some friends, but that's okay. <laughs> well, they come hand in hand, he said. <laughs> I know. Yeah. You'll, you'll get friends when you play I'm pickleball. I'm like, I'm going to do pickleball just so I can have friends. Um, so how has the pickleball, I mean, how has, have you noticed a change since you've been diagnosed and um, in the in your game, your reaction time or anything like that? Yeah. So when I first started taking Carvalivadopa, like it would just make me lethargic. And so, you know, I would see somebody hit the ball clear across the court and I'm like, I should get my paddle up. I should be ready. And then it like hits me in the chest oh, and I'm no. like, well, this isn't fun. Mm -hmm. So I literally only take Carvalivadopa at night um, and deal with the shakes so that I can be more, I mean, not only in work, but in pickleball, I can be more attentive and be awake and alert. So other than like just the medication side, um, you know, the movement of your hand, as we know, you know, your, your dexterity, mm -hmm. your quickness isn't there. So like every day it's a little bit different of like when it fires and how much it, you know, fires when a ball's coming. Um, so just adjusting for that. And, you know, it's probably not as big a deal in rec play as it is when you're playing tournaments of trying to get the ball in certain spots. Um, but it is, it is, it's a daily, you know, every time I play, it's like, okay, what's working today? What's not working? Um, you know, it definitely affects, you know, when you go across from the center line as, mm -hmm. as we know, you know, um, so yeah, there's different things that affect it, uh, not for the normal, just recreation play. Um, but the more competitive you are, yeah. it definitely can affect it. What, um, what other symptoms do you deal with? So shaking in the right arm, shaking in my right leg. Okay. So, um, and then like 
I was listening to you guys' podcast, uh, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, and you were talking about your elbow, and I'm yeah. like, oh, I just thought I had, like, tennis elbow, even though it was in my left That's, elbow. Yeah. But it only, like, for me, like, it's at night when I wake up in the yes. morning. It's super stiff, and right. then, like, Throughout and the it, day, I'm like, and they kept trying better. to tell, yeah. they kept trying to tell me it was a uh, tendonitis from lifting weights and stuff like that. I'm like, no, this is because you're so buff. <laughs> oh, I used to be back in the day. <laughs> yeah, so I was just, like, wait a second, I'm not, I didn't even put the two together until yeah. you guys. I only that. did because Brian used to talk about his elbow. So when I like, it was a couple months ago, and I woke up, and like you said, it just like it's in the morning and it's at night and it's in the middle of the night, and yeah. it's just like I can't, I can't explain like. It, oh, like it's just like hurts. is it pain or I, I don't know, but it's just like oh yeah. my god, like, trying to stretch like, it out. Yeah, you, you you lay there and you're like, okay, I have to bend my elbow. Yeah, it's gonna hurt. Yeah. It's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt. So for, for me, like I went, you know, I go to rock steady, so boxing and, mm-hmm. and doing those things isn't as bad. It's like when you go to pick up something and just try to turn it a little bit. Mm. That's when it really like mm-hmm. you can feel it throughout the day, but like. Normally, uh, I don't even feel it when I play pickleball. No, I always say it's like when I'm arm. reaching out, reaching for a plate in the yeah, out of the cupboard. Mm. That's what I notice it. Like I'm like, ah, oh, yeah. that little plate, just that little plate. Yeah. Um, so you work out at Rockstar? Do you still work out, or do you just pickleball? So I I try. I don't get there as much as I'd like because of pickleball <clears> schedule <throat> and. Do you play? Uh, like, are there other people with Parkinson's that you know of that you play with, or? So is usually, it known that you have Parkinson's amongst the group? Yeah. So I, I don't play with them, but I've like, I'll go play at a tennis place on Saturday mm-hmm. and there'll be one to two courts of people like husband and wife or just, mm-hmm. you know, the guys will play or the girls will play. Um, and so there's probably like eight to 10 people that play pickleball um, with Parkinson's okay. as well. There's so. I've heard, like, I know they say, like, ping pong, but then they, didn't somebody come out, wasn't there something posted that, like, pickleball is good for Parkinson's patients because of the eye-hand coordination, the the quick movement, stuff like that? Oh, I absolutely think so. I mean, like, you know, I mean, balance is one, and, you know, I play at a higher level, and I I still haven't, like, fallen um, mm-hmm. and, you know, I mean, not like at night when the lights are off and you're trying to walk down the hallway, you, you kind of wobble back and forth, but I've been luckily, you know, with pickleball, once you start moving, it's just, it's, yeah. I haven't seen any effects. So I, I, I say I'm going to play as long as I can possibly play. Yeah. Well, I know it's good for, you know, not even, it's just, it's, it's good exercise, I think for everybody. That's awesome. So another thing that we wanted to touch on is this Ceratom. I have no idea if I'm saying it right, but it's C-E-R-E Tom. (laughs) Registration mark, DBS. Um, But you were looking into getting that done, or you are getting it done. Um, But tell us what that is compared to like the DBS that Brian has had. Yeah, so it was interesting because I love trying to research and just look as many YouTube Mm -hmm. videos as possible of like all the different options. And at least in my area, there was two surgeons, main surgeons that did it. And so, you know, I asked my neurologist, I'm like, so if it's your brain, who are you going with? And so he recommended Dr. Lee. And so Dr. Lee actually did his residency down in Texas with the guy that invented this type of surgery. Oh. Um, and so basically they just take a high resolution MRI mm-hmm. and then day of surgery, they overlap it with your CAT scan that you're on a table. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they'll put both of the leads in. You'll be totally out for the whole thing. Um, and then I'll go back a week later, just like I think Brian, I think you went back a week or two later. I'll one week later, I'll go back and get the wires put down my neck and the battery pack. So, so are they doing both sides? Yes. At the same time then? Yes. Okay. Yep. So how, what, why, how is that different like from what you did? What? So, cause they wake you up, Brian, right? Yeah. So During... when, when they did mine, first of all, they only did one side at a time a month apart. Right. So. But they... why were you awake and he's sleeping? 
because they're identifying the the sweet spot before he goes under. Oh, right, yeah. So they can, they look at the MRI and know the path that they're going to take, the high resolution MRI, and then the day of surgery when they do the CAT scan, mm-hmm. they can overlap those to make sure they're getting them in the right right spot. So what they did with me is they woke me up to make sure that they had they had played, the right spot. They had the right spot, oh. and they test it and they turn it on and. One of the things that really sold me is like, you know, they always talk about, you know, because a lot of people wait till they're older yeah. to get it done. And they're like, no, really, I mean, the sooner you can get it done, the better. Because like if you took two twins that had Parkinson's and mm-hmm. had one on carvalivodopa and the other one have DBS, the one with DBS would definitely be better for longer because mm-hmm. um, of kind of just freezing the Parkinson's or the s- symptoms at a younger a younger age. So is everything then still the same as the other, like the regular DBS in terms of like how, you know, it's, it's taken Brian and Roz like a bit to like tweak their, or when they get turned on, like, you know, the, the path for all of that, is that still the same? Yeah, pretty, I think so. I mean, it's like two weeks after my second surgery, then I can go to my neurologist and he can start tweaking on it and it's about a month a month before i can play pickleball again so which were the big questions so the two big questions was like which side do you want the battery in so don't they ask you like where you want the gun or like where you would hold yes well because my my surgeon did his residency in texas and that was very important i'm like pickleball is more important and i'm right-handed so i'd rather have it on my left side so but for you brian was it about a month recovery before you could you know, when I had when I had the first surgery, I had right away I felt amazing. Like I did had no symptoms for like a week or two weeks, a week and a half, yeah. I think. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna gut that bathroom. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna travel again. And then like a week later, I was like, oh wait, <laughs> I have to have Parkinson's. Um, <laughs> the recovery time really was more or less. I mean, it wasn't. There wasn't anything that I couldn't do. You know, it's more yeah. just being cautious of it. Mm-hmm. But as far as, I mean, your brain didn't have any nerve endings, so it's like you don't have any feeling up there. Yeah. It's like you're in pain or anything like that. Now, the when they implanted the, the battery and pulled the wires through, that was a little bit, it wasn't even painful as much as just as, just felt, you, know, you feel that. You feel a lot <laughs> different. Um, yeah. But Yeah, you were you were back at the gym, I feel like, pretty quickly. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, because, well, the next, we had the, after the first time, the, I had it on Thursday, we had the Roman sale on Saturday, oh, I yeah. met you guys up there. Yeah, but you, since you're getting done, you're both sides at one time, I think, yeah. I don't know if that's better or not, but I feel like you said the second, the, the second, second side would put you out a little bit more. Yeah, the second side, there wasn't as many, um, I didn't have the honeymoon period after the second surgery, like I was hoping for, yeah. but... But no, like the medication, I'm down a lot on medication. I'm, you know, I don't have the the fog, the, the fog in my right. head. And I mean, I, I would do it all a mm-hmm. hundred times over and over again. Yeah, that's, that's what a- I'm, I'm hoping for, you know. And for me, I'm lethargic and want to take naps when I take medicine. So for me, medication isn't really a good, I've tried like eight different medications and all that. And it just... Mm-hmm. I just want to sleep and yep. not myself. So for me, the DBS is a no-brainer. Of I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this if I can, you know, if my insurance covers it, and mm-hmm. you know, um, and so like for me, probably the most nervous part was the psychological test. Well, so I've I've had neck surgery and knee surgery, so I'm not like for me, I have full faith in doctors. Like yeah. let's you know, if I have a small chance to be better, yeah. I'm gonna gonna take it that's awesome well best of luck to you i'd actually love to catch up um after your surgery if you want to come back on again um because you know this is a different type of dbs it's a different type of surgery so i'm sure people will be interested just to hear you know again kind of the differences that you guys can talk about well marcus thank you so much for for reaching out and and coming on um I think, you know, what you're doing with pickleball is awesome. I hope to see more of it, um, especially with people with Parkinson's. You know, I think it's 
it's kind of it's getting to the point where what we're trying to do is like really break that stigma of what Parkinson's is and what it looks like um, because yeah. it affects you know more than what people think you know people just right. think wheelchairs or sitting or not, you know, they can't do anything. It's like you can. With pickleball, for especially with Parkinson's, because you don't always want to be social, mm -hmm. but <laughs> it, it gets you out of your comfort zone of like meeting people and then just, you know, having fun at the same time. And you don't have to, you know, you can play tournaments, but you don't have yeah. to. You can just do it for recreation and exercise and have fun. See, and maybe Brian will get some friends if he joins up. I want to play. I want to play. I want to play. Well, Marcus, again, thank you so much. Good luck with your surgery. Good luck with the tournament. Um, and then we'll be in touch soon. All right. Thank you. But uh, in our last 30 seconds, I'd love to leave you all with this. As we say in all of our different episodes, you do you. But there are other surgeries. There are other procedures, therapies that you can look into. So make sure you do your research, talk to your doctor, and, and find out what is going to work for you so that you can live your best life today. Pick up a paddle ball? No, a pickleball paddle? Pick up, <laughs> start playing pickleball. That might be something that you can do to help with uh, building your community, a support system, and just having fun while you're living with Parkinson's. Thank you for tuning in.